to the inspiring body of Christ Church. Ricky Rush is our anointed pastor, and especially in times like these, we still believe that the power of the Word of God can change lives for His glory. Listen, now it is so easy to be disconnected. So more than ever, we need to stay connected to God's Word, and we need to stay connected to each other. So if you're watching online, if you are listening on the parking lot, or if If you are here in person, we just want to say thank you for staying connected. God is doing a brand new thing, family. It's time to experience the joy.
Father, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much. We thank you so much, Lord. You've been so good to us. You've been better to us, Lord, than we've been to ourselves, right? Thank you for this word right now. Thank you for this opportunity of life right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the word of God would be so easy to digest today, God. Speak directly to our hearts and speak directly to where we are right now, this day, in this time of our lives. In your life-changing, everlasting word that never gets old and never gets stale to us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. There's so many things I could say right now. That 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 song just tells a story. And it's it's kind of hard to recuperate. I got to go ahead and do the word now. Uh this this I got to go ahead and do the word. I've got I've got to go ahead and preach the word. This wasn't those times where you want to just lift your hands and walk around a little bit. That was uh thank you praise team for always coming together and just letting God use you and representing our our Lord and Savior and ministry and praise. Now I, I've got to move forward. This this message today is very uh, personally intended for those of us who need to hear uh, from God and, 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 and I'm just going to tell you right now on the onset uh, God's got something. If you give me just a little bit more volume here, just for myself here, it, but, but it's okay. Uh, those of you on the internet, I need you to hear this when this message loud and clear, and I need you to hear it fast, and I need you to hear it actively. Um, today, I want to, I want to, I want to just say a couple of things real quick. I hear that there is another strain of this um, COVID virus that's kind of on on the way here, and. <clears throat> I've heard and I've watched and I've been really quiet. I've been really quiet this year, really quiet. The Holy Spirit has just said, be quiet. I want you to watch some things. I have watched and I've observed people who said, God, I'll never walk away from you. I'll never leave you. I will fear not and all of that. I hear those of us now, whether we're posting it on a Facebook page or whether we're writing it on a story or whether we're getting a microphone in a church and using it as a part of our testimony, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of us who, has, who, who have promised God, I, I know that I, I'll, I'll be with you and you'll be with me. And, and then we, we got hit by something that, that made us change our words, change our focus maybe, change our minds. Now, I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge the fact that there will be some that will hear this message today that may not necessarily believe what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, but I have to make sure that I get it out of my system so God will let me rest. In the book of Ephesians, now we know that, we know, we know, we understand, okay, there's a, there's, it's been established, there's a new strain, um, uh, 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 a new variant of this COVID-19 is going around, and it has changed how we have done everything it has whatever it is that we cannot see whatever it is and I'm not a scientist I'm not a doctor I'm not a medical technician I'm none of those things that <laughs> that some who are empowers have tried to pretend they are I'm none of those things so but I am a believer and I have been a believer long enough to know that when the enemy says something, God said something first. So I'm gonna, I got to move fast on what God is saying to us because now we, we've got to go back before we get out. of This is our last Sunday of the year. So it's been the last Sunday of the year. This has been a crazy, a, a more different year than we've ever experienced. I watched Christmas tree lightings the other day where no one was allowed to even huddle around the tree and hold hands. Um, I've watched sporting events where no one was allowed to go across the field and 
give anybody high fives and hugs. You know how we do. Just all kinds of things have just changed. And more than that, the most dramatic thing that I've watched is how those of us as believers have wanted to come to church. And we, by advice and the knowledge of what we know, have been made to know that we can't come to church together and do what we always do. And we are obedient, we are wise, we're smart. But just like there's a new strain of COVID, this is not new to God. This is not new to God. So if you don't mind, because we know now on the 31st, starting at 12 noon, we're going to pray on the hour, every hour. We're going to all stop what we're doing, go to Facebook that moment, that moment. So get where you'll have good internet. Every hour, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, starting at 12 noon, all the way to midnight. Get where you can get some good reception. Get on Facebook Live. Go to Ricky Rush Live. Go to IBOC Church Live or on YouTube Live. And we're going to stop and we're going to just honor. We're just going to honor God with prayer. And that's going to, I'm just telling you right now, it's going to tick the devil off and it's going to drive the devil away. Can you be sure of that, Pastor Rush? That's why I'm preaching this morning. We got to get start being sure of some things. In the book of Ephesians, it's already been written in the Amplified Bible. It said, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Okay? So we got to now get our minds off of what people are saying and people are doing. And, 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 and it's contending only with the physical opponents here. Our, our struggle is not that. But ours is against rulers, against the powers, against the, uh, against the world forces of this present darkness. Okay, this was written before we were born, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. So something has invaded even the spiritual realm to make us think that God is putting some on us that he's trying to bring out of us. So now there's a whole different kind of fear. There's a whole different kind of Worry and nervousness. So I want to talk this morning, if you don't mind, I want to talk about the next strain of believers. The next strain of believers. If you watch the news, and you will, if you'll start watching and reading papers, and you will, you're going to hear a lot of talk now about the next strain of COVID. That's about to take over every day, every month. There's some brand new news. False, true, indifferent, crazy ridiculous it's just something else for satan to get involved with our battle is not first of all with flesh and blood our battle is not with humans our battle is not with denominations our battle is not against this man and this woman and this organization our battle that we're in right now and i'm talking to those of you if you're up right now i need you to help me with this message our battle is spiritual I, no, I battle the spiritual. See, see, you can't do anything about getting older. So stop trying to not get old. Stop trying to not look like you're going to have some aches and pains. Stop all of that trying to pretend you're going to be the same age, the same size, the same thought pattern the rest of your life. That's not your battle. If Satan can get you in that battle, he'll catch you off guard and make you forget about how blessed you are, even in the midst of being uh, uncomfortable. Our battle is spiritual and the conflict is spiritual and so since the conflict is spiritual then our weapons have to be spiritual so we're not going to fight with words we're not going to well we're not with with bad negative words we're not going to fight with weapons we're going to fight with something that god has given us now with this new strain of believers i want to go through some different points real quick and get us out of here because we've got to get ready for what's next. With this new strain of believers, and I do believe there's another strain of believers. Now, I'm not talking about the strain of, of, of COVID-19. I'm not going to talk about that because I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And I don't need anybody calling me, asking me about that. I'm telling you about what I know. But with this next strain, there's another strain of believers. See, after this is over, and after this is passed, because the Bible said it came to pass. After this is passed, something, every, every sickness, every disease, every attack leaves us different. Yeah, yeah, after every transplant, after every surgery, after every battle with a flu or pneumonia, whatever you have, 
every battle of aging, arthritis, it leaves us different. You start out as a running, walking giant, and after something hits you, you may have just a little different. There are some side effects and some, some, some leftovers to remind the people that don't know you that you've been through something. That's what sometimes the bending over in the spine becomes, the, the, uh, the difference in the voice, the strength. Something happened, and it left some side effects. I don't know what COVID-19's side effects have been on anybody. I'm not a science, scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical expert. But maybe you've been around some people who've been affected by COVID-19 and you don't even know the side effects that it's had. So sometimes we're afraid of going into things because we don't know the side effects. But I believe there's another strain of believers that are coming along. Somebody who's saying, God... In the midst of it all, I declare that I'm going to trust you. I mean, I'm not talking about those who say, ooh, today, this hurts, that hurts. I think I'm getting this. Every time you look around now, y'all, we got something. And if we don't have something, we're claiming something. We're bringing something in because now it's starting to wear down our belief of what God said he would do. So I believe this next strain of believers, if you're the next strain of believer, then the next strain of believers, we got to use the word of God. I'm going to go through a few of these and we're going to be done. We're going to have to use the word of God. We're going to have to use the word of God. That next young person that's coming to the Lord, that next older person that says, now, now I, I've been through one thing, God, and I'm ready to go through another. You, you are the next strain. You are the next strain. People are acting somewhat afraid of what's coming next with COVID-19. Because somebody, I don't know who he is. I don't know who she is. But somebody said, it's going to be worse than what was. And we already know what was bad. But I'm here to declare this morning that God said the next move of God is going to be better than what was. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced God before. And I'm not silly enough, and I'm not strange enough, and I'm not dumb enough to sit here and try to preach about a COVID-19 virus that I have nothing and no knowledge of necessarily. The whole world is ignorant about it. But I do know that if you would hook up with God and you've been hooked up with God, you ought to know by now that every time it looks dark, God has a light. But now Satan says we can't even turn on the light anymore. We talk as Christians as if there's no hope. We talk as Christians as if we're going to get everything. We talk as Christians as if our, our, you, you have spoken up pneumonia, you're going to speak up flu, you speak up asthma, you speak up heart attack, you speak up viruses, you speak up getting sick. And now we find we're going to look for medicine everywhere. And the God, he said, my word is medicine to you. Now, I know I can sound strange, but I've been out here before. And since I've been out here before, I've learned how to survive on my own. I don't have to, but I've learned how to. But the next strain of believers, whoever you are listening, you're going to have to use the word of God. That's the weapon. That's how we're going to fight him. So it would, it would seem normal for Satan to say, shut down every place the word is coming from. Every victorious Christian has to learn how to use the Bible effectively. Are we back to that? Is that how we're going to end our 2020? Come on. Isn't that how you started 2020? Didn't you start out believing? Didn't you sit up one day and make some resolutions? Uh, December 31st last year, and God, no matter what comes, I'll be with you, and I'll be by you, and I'll see you next week, week Mama. I'll see you next week, Daddy. And all of a sudden, death invaded our family. It, the whole family of God has been shaken. Satan started to declare that the righteous were not righteous and the men and women of God were not real women and men of God. And then he started giving us other things to think about and we forgot about what God said. We just didn't remember it because it didn't seem fresh enough. God's word is alive and it's powerful and it's sharp. And with God's word in your heart, let me tell you something. You will, if it's in your heart and in your mind, you will dominate Satan. You will dominate Satan. Don't be surprised that there are some people that are wondering why you haven't fallen completely apart. I'm not saying you didn't fall down, but you didn't fall completely apart. Like Jesus, we can use the word of God with our mouths against the enemy. He put his mouth 
on the enemy. You can put your mouth on the enemy if you say what he said. I'm talking about this new strain of believers. I just believe God's raising another generation who will say, okay, the devil's stuff was bad. Can anybody tell me a way out? And somebody here will be able to say, listen, if you'll just trust God, if you'll lean on the Lord, if you give your life to Jesus, he'll give you a manual on how to handle what's next in your life. And I know I'm talking fast, but I got to get to the point on this now. The word of God is the medicine we need to use. It's what God has given us, but I think we stop taking our medicine. And when you start taking your medicine, guess what? You start growing your own generic medicine. That medicine can come through anything that can go through your ears or your eyes. The Bible is infallible and it's inspirational. First of all, it's just not going to be wrong. It's not going to fail you. And, and it's just going to be supernatural in its application to daily living. There are things in this word of God that we'll read, that we've been reading already, that you would not imagine was in there, and it's not until you need it that you go to it. It's got to be read, though. Everybody listen to me. It's got to be read, and it's got to be studied. If it's not read, and if it's not studied, it can't be effective in your life. You can say I'm going to school to be whatever you are, but if you don't read and if you don't study, you're just going to go to school and say that you're not going to be able to perform. I'll say it again. You can go to school and say you're going to be whatever you're going to be, but if you don't read, not just read, and study, and I mean take it inside, then I don't care what kind of degree you have, what profession you have, you're not going to be able to be good in it. You're not going to prosper in it. You're not going to be successful in it if you don't study it. The Word of God has to be studied. You can be a mighty man or woman of God. I'm talking about that person now who's going to be <laughs> on, that, on that next strain of believers. You can be a mighty man or woman of God by giving the word first place in your life. What do we mean by first place? Just like you're doing right now. You came in service today. You knew there weren't going to be a whole lot of preliminaries. And sometimes in church we did. We had a lot. Churches all over the world had a lot of preliminaries. People only went because their choir was singing. Their children were performing. Their artists were singing. Their, their announcement was being played. Um, their, their particular organization was being featured. Um, their family members were being on program. And um, that was pretty much it. Then, then whatever 10, 15 minutes was left, the, the, the man or woman of God had a chance to preach. But you can be mighty if you make this first place in your life. We're here this morning because you have made this first place. You got up and said, I know what's going on at church. There's going to be a word. And Satan has done and will do. Let me say the will do word. He will do everything he can to make you doubt not just the word of God, but the man of God that God is using to deliver his word. It wasn't that the children of Israel didn't believe God. They had a hard time trying to believe Moses because they just couldn't understand how Moses could care for some people like them. And he just didn't seem like he was the right person to lead them out. Let's make the word first place. Make the word first place in your life. If you're in that next strain of believers, you got to make the word first place in your life. Number two, we now know that the first thing is that next strain of believers, you're going to have to use the word of God. You're gonna we're going to have to get back into this. That's why we're coming here tonight, 6 o'clock. That's why we're here the next service at 10 o'clock. I did not understand when God told us to go three services. And how are you going to go three services, God, with zero people in the house? Because this next level of believers is going to have to have some available word. You know what we do right now? We get up every morning, run down to Walmart, run down to Sears, we run down to Dillard, we run down to Target, we run down to Kroger, we run down to Minyards. No, we don't. We sit where we are and we order it and it comes right to us. That's all God is doing this morning. You ain't running down to the church. You ain't running down to the altar. You ain't running out to the bus stop. You're not running to catch the church van, but you can roll over right now. And God says, I will put my word right there. Satan, when he thought he put us in a trap, we were still able to get everything we want. But we just had to call it in, dial it in electronically. You put the word first place in your life. And now you say, I can't get to church, but that doesn't keep the word from getting to you. God was first at this idea. Satan just overtook it. We were so used to fellowshipping and being with each other that we forgot about who was delivering the meal. The word of God, okay? I'm talking about the next strain of believers. You're going to have to use 
We're going to have to have the word of God. So I don't know this next group of young people coming up. That's why Satan is saying to them, don't talk the Bible. Don't read the Bible. Don't look at the Bible. This is not real. Because he knows that this next strain of believers, we're going to have to have that. We're going we're to have to have it. I don't care how powerful the world is coming. I don't care how strong it is. We're going to have to have what God said use. What God said use. Listen, y'all, it got us where we are. Come on. The only reason COVID-19 is so bad for some of us is because you've never been through anything else yet. The next strain of believers, we got to use the name of Jesus. You're going to have to use the name of Jesus. Jesus gave the church his name. The name of Jesus is above every name. And at that name, beings in heaven and earth and underneath the earth has to bow. That name is dominion. It's, it, it dominates. The name of Jesus dominates. Before he was crucified, Jesus spoke to his followers, right? And he, he talked about the day that he would give them power and authority to, to, to use his exalted name. Listen, I'm going to give you the ability and the power and the authority to use my name. They, and they would use it in prayer. He gave them. He talked about them. He talked to them. He said, look, 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 look. Uh, for instance, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but I'm going to tell your mom that you can use the car. I'm not going to be here next week, but I'm going to tell your dad that you can use the car. See, he gave them the power. He, here, here are the keys, and he gave them the authority. I'm speaking it to everybody around, and he gave them the ability. He taught them how to do it first. So God has given us the key. He's told the devil that we can use it, and now he's given us the key, the authority, and he's given us the ability and the chance, and, and, and he said, now bring on your next strain of whatever. My children. Will use my name. But we're getting afraid to use the name now, y'all. We claim everything. I, I never seen it. Well, she's going to probably have a fit. He's going to probably get sick. And they're going to probably. It, do you know why this is going kind of so crazy? Because we, we have the ability to speak. And we're bringing this stuff in. We're bringing it. Oh, it's bad. Oh, the church is falling apart. Oh, people aren't coming like they be like they should. People are not going to believe. Everybody's getting sick. You keep saying it. He said, "Use my name." I need the next strain of believers now, since we already scared that other strain. I need the next strain to use my name. Jesus said. The works that he did and greater works his followers would do because he's going to the Father. And then in his next breath, in his next breath, he said to them, and whatsoever you ask in my name, woo-wee, he's telling them, you know, I'm going to the Father, but I'm going to, whatever you should ask in my name, ask in my name, that will, listen, I'm going to do it. But you got to ask in my name. You can't start. I know. It's just, we wonder why there's so much craziness. We're talking crazy, y'all. I'm talking to believers right now. The world has a right to be frightened out of their mind, scared out of their mind. You don't know what's going to come up next. You don't, we forgot what God said was going to come up next. He said, that will I do. That the Father might be glorified in the Son. Ye shall, if you ask anything, anything in my name, I will do it. And the devil came right along and said, you can't have that. You can't do that. Folk might die from this. Why? Because we spoke Satan's words and not God's word. We didn't put the name of Jesus on it. You can say whatever you want to say when you go over somebody's house. But if you say that person said it, then it's going to be done. I want to go up and I want to go sit in Tyrone's office. No, Tyrone said that I could come into his office. Here's the key. He gave me the code. Well, that's the authority. Every time we talk to us now on the phone, I'm sick. I'm not feeling good. Can't do better. It doesn't look good. What do you think about that? I don't know if we can. Where did that come from? That's that old strain of belief. That's that old strain. There's a new strain of believers coming back now. They say, God, okay, 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 I will take you at your word. And after his death and burial and resurrection, before he went into, um, before he ascended and sit down with the Father at the right hand, Jesus told his disciples, he said, now look, I want you to, I want you to go and teach all nations. That's what we're doing right now. 
Go teach people. Oh, I need to hear something to set me on fire. You need to understand you, you could be on fire but not know what heat is. He said, I want you to go teach them. And Mark records all the signs that would follow those that believe. Man, he said in Mark 16th chapter, and I'm just staying right there with the word of God. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. He said that my name shall, and, and, and these that uh, follow my name, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. You can't go calling somebody a hell raiser. But he said, in my name, you're going to cast it out. If it's not being cast out, you're not calling the name of Jesus. You're just calling somebody hell. You're calling somebody the devil. You're calling them full of it. But he said, in my name. This is what I'm talking about, that next strain of believers. I believe this morning right now, there's another strain of believers. I don't care if you've been in the Lord five years. I think that right now, your next year is getting ready to start. And you're going to go, okay, God, I want to be included. Now, that first strain was bad. But I want to be a part of the next one that just kicks Satan straight out of it. We haven't even seen the next strain of virus, but the word is out that it's in Europe. I don't care if it's at the drugstore on Buckner. God said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. Use my word instead of all your knowledge. Your knowledge is failure. You don't know where the virus is, but you know where God is. He's right there. You should cast out devils. And he said, those that are in my name will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any daily thing, it won't hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. We're afraid to lay hands on sick now because we don't want to get what the sick people got. What happened to us? We can't go to the hospital. They blocked us out. Because I believe the devil knows that if we bust up in the emergency room, you talk about a vaccine, we're sitting on it. We're looking at it. I know you can call me crazy. You can call me crazy. But something's going to have to happen if you don't renew your mind. You're going to stress out. You have the keys to the kingdom. He said it. I didn't say it. Why are people dying around us? You know, the devil told us, don't put your hands on them. And we listened to him. And we respect the devil so much, we said, I ain't touching people. I have, yes, I have, and I don't mind anybody knowing. I've tried my best to get in hospitals. No, can't go up in there, Reverend. Can't go up in there. But that's, that's, that's power right there. And it's all in his name. Every soldier of the cross, that's who we are, y'all. Every soldier of the cross who walks in victory and dominion knows that he possesses this weapon. And, and he knows how to use it. He, he knows how to use it. And maybe, y'all, we forgot how to use the weapon. We got to use the word of God. And, and we got to be able to use the name of Jesus. Let me move on here. I want to go to the third thing. The next strain of believers. That's who we are. You got to, wherever you are, say, okay, God, if the next strain of COVID is coming, then I want to be a part of the next Next strain of, of a believer that comes. But the next strain of, 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 of believers, we, we got to use faith. Now, some of us started out with faith. And then something happened, and we lost it. Sometimes people with great power. Sometimes people with great, um, I don't know what the word is I'm trying to use, but have great social media pool, can stand up in front of a bunch of people and because of that influence say, I don't think we're going to make it. And I'm almost, I'm scared out of my mind. And you start speaking those words and those words coming from a person who's a believer. Go into another person's life and now all of a sudden you, you, you're a part of the, the, the strain. We got to be a part of the strain of believers. We got to still speak faith. If somebody drops down in your face, you got to speak faith. Without dynamic faith, y'all, and we know faith in this ministry, a believer can successfully engage in battle with demon power and win. You're going to have to first have some dynamic faith. Now, this next strain of believers, we got to have some dynamic faith. Or we are not, we are not, we're not going to be able to fight against demons and win. We'll fight, we'll fight, we'll fight. And Satan will drag us in the public, make us look a fool, talk bad about us, bring people away from us. Then we'll be fighting, but we won't win if you don't have dynamic faith. If you don't have dynamic faith, and that's why we're teaching this word today, because that dynamic faith comes from this dynamic word right here, using his name right here, and that's how faith is developed. Those three, they all 
go together. Pastor, what are we going to do? We're going to believe his word. We're going to use his name. And we're going to exercise in our dynamic faith. When Jesus came down from the mountain, he was transfigured. He was met with the news that his disciples were not able to. There's this man whose son was demon possessed. And, uh, and, uh, and, and they couldn't heal his son. And that man told Jesus to his face, your boys couldn't do it. We're sitting up. We're afraid to pray for people. Any, we're afraid to pray out loud for people. Somebody calls you and say, I think I have this. Stop right there and say, can I pray for you? I've, I've probably done more of that now than I have in my whole ministry. Folk have just stopped calling me because they don't want to hear me pray. Does you hear me pray? Well, I think my lower back, I'm having in my own. Bam, here I go. Putting the word on it. Putting the prayer on it. Using my faith. Saying, God, I don't know how strong theirs is, but here's mine. I want to put it right there on his or her behalf. And the disciples went to Jesus, or went to this man. This man went to his disciples and said, my son was sick, but your boys couldn't heal him. The first reaction to this report, Jesus turned in Matthew 17, 17. He just looked at his boys, and he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long am I going to put up with you? Is that us? Is that us? We come to church. We know all the church songs. We know all the church rules. We know all the church laws. We're going to show and make sure the little rules and laws are fulfilled. But every time you turn around, we can't do something. We're allergic to this. We can't have that. And we break down on this. Every, it's just, if you just listen to us long enough, we got everything that everybody else has. And we keep on. And then we don't go. I can't go because. I can't go because. You can't go because we, we might be a part of this faithless and, and, and perverse generation. He said, how long am I going to put up with you? How long should I suffer with you? He said, bring that boy to me. Bring him here. And Jesus rebuked who? The devil. The strain that was there. And what did he do? He departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. And that hour means maybe when Jesus walked away, the little boy was still jerking and going on and acting crazy. So don't just expect to go boom, pow. We're not talking about a magician here. We're talking about faith. I love when he said that very hour because somewhere between the time that Jesus rebuked and the devil left within that hour, within that hour, that boy was better. He ran up a different, uh, Satan ran up against a whole different strain of belief. The disciples were believers. I believe they, you know, they, they had the right motives. But they ran up against just demons. And then they, when they saw this lunatic, the lunatic was like COVID. And here comes another strain of him. I don't know about that. Jesus said, there's nothing wrong with this. But some things just come through prayer and supplication. We can do a great concert on New Year's. We could. We could still have a virtual concert and all that stuff. And y'all going to hear about how we're going to be all on the walls. We're going to send you a link. You're going to be a part of being in this service with me. Midnight, sit right here. No lights on. I'll be in here just praying with you. We'll come right together. Yeah. We were right in here on one accord. And we're going to watch the devil depart because we're going to speak that thing. And we're going to offer God prayer. And we're going to do it his way. Enough of ours. He's the star. He's the feature. He's the main attraction. And the devil says, if I can keep him out of church, I can get him away from him. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You just made us spread. Now we're like a virus you can't see. So are we. And we're the next strain of believers. In Jesus' name, we believe that. In Jesus' name, we speak that. So in Jesus' name, every attack that comes against us will come because of that. I'm not shocked at the attacks that come in my life. I don't like them. They make me look horrible, guilty, bad for walk away from you. But at the end of it, whenever that is, God said, you just look back now. Where are you? You're still standing, but I want you to look to your left and the right. Where are your friends? Where are your supporters? Where is your spirit? Where is your faith? Are you bold enough to stand up and say how you got through it? The devil departed. Why did he leave that boy? Because Jesus said so. He gave you and I the same authority. This message, I might teach it seven weeks in a row if I need to. I know what they're going to preach about. I'll preach about it until we do it. Everybody's not getting a different vaccine that's coming out now. We're getting the same vaccine. 
It's the same vaccine. I don't care what your denomination is. It's the same vaccine. By the way, it's not a black vaccine. It's not a white vaccine. It's not a rich vaccine. It's not a poor vaccine. It's medicine for the body. That's what the word is. Disciples asked him, why couldn't we do that? He said, man, because of your unbelief. That's what he told the boys. Y'all couldn't do it because of your unbelief. It wasn't that you weren't going to church. Y'all reading all this stuff and doing all this stuff and talking all this stuff and singing all this stuff at home. But every time you look around, you got, you got the same thing everybody else got all the time. Always complaining. Always complaining. You, and you know what? Satan will answer your complaints. Every time you complain, Satan will answer your complaint. Now, I'm not saying don't go to your doctor. Don't take your medicine. I'm not saying that. But stop being the people that every time you hear something on the news, you don't call somebody and tell them about church, but you show sure call them and tell them, I think Corona's on your street now. The disciples said, why couldn't we do it? He said, because of your unbelief. He said, if you just had faith the, the size of a, a mustard seed, you could say to this, and won't you agree that Corona is a mountain? Won't you agree it's a mountain? Won't you agree it's a mountain? Won't you agree it's a mountain? Yes, you know it's a mountain. But Jesus said, if you could just speak to this mountain, if you could speak to the mountain, if you had a little bit of faith, just, as, just put me in the conversation. You say to that mountain, remove. He said, it shall remove. Whoa, we got to get this new strain of believers in here because this new strain of believers got to be able to speak to something that's bigger than science. This new strain of believer got to be able to come in and say, wait a minute, I'm going to trust this God thing. When a person is challenged by a temptation, about disease, about the devil, your faith has to constantly come into focus. We're still on number three. How are we going to do with this new believer? He's got to have his faith. The devil will come with disease, with some kind of temptation, with some kind of anything. You've got to keep your faith in focus. We've got to have faith to command God's power. God, I'm bringing you in on this now. God, I'm bringing you in on this. God told Abraham he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham reasoned with God and stood before the Lord and said, God, if you just let me find 50 people. God said, go find, okay, okay, I can't find 50, let me find 40. Okay, find 40. God, he just kept sending him back. God agreed to Abraham's request. The true power of faith has never been fully, really, utilized by man. God is still waiting on the hero of faith. He's still waiting on somebody to just use the faith. In the New Testament, it was a force of faith that caused Peter to turn to a body of a dead woman. And he said, Tabitha. He said, arise. The woman was dead. I'm talking about a mountain. It was by faith that he commanded the spirit of divination to come out of that fortune-telling damsel. Faith, every time he did something, he would speak something. Let me tell you what it is now. Faith is the key. Here he goes. If you want God to do something, you want God to do something, and I'm talking about this next level of believer, this next string of a believer, not this next strain of COVID. Don't come up to me with that anymore. Don't talk to me about that. I, if you're going to talk to me, talk to me about the next strain of believers. Faith is the key that unlocks the generation, the generosity, and the strength of God. If he's going to do something now, he's going to have to do it by faith. And the reason your stuff is not strong is because you're trying to do it on what you think and what you know. Are you doing it based on his faith? That's the key. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He says, I'm not going to get involved with it if you keep trying to make me do it by the news report. News reports lie. Media reports lie. They don't believe God. They don't believe Jesus. They want to put you in fear. And I'm not saying everybody. Don't start. Don't. And you can write about me if you need to. But I'm not saying it. But there are some stories because Satan knows that we like to hear stuff that's exciting, spectacular. But God said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. Without lies, it's impossible to please Satan. He said, I got to get you to tell a lie so I can keep getting some press. 
I think I'm not going to make it. That's a lie. I think she's bad. That's a lie. I think I got the flu. I think I got, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Those are all lies. You have those symptoms. You go to God and say, Lord, Satan's trying to put these symptoms on me. I need you to uncover it in Jesus' name. Take you 35 Tylenols for your body if you need to, but take you five scriptures for your healing. See, the Tylenol just might get you through the symptoms while you're feeling sore, but the word of God is going to drive it out so you can let the devil know whose side you're on. Faith has been called, I'm, I'm still on number three, I gotta, I gotta move on. Faith has been called the eye that sees the invisible. Okay, we see what's not there. We see the healing. Everybody's gonna say, ooh, you look like you got this, and ooh, you look like that, and ooh, you look like that. And we have our children walking in fear now because we speak all these negative words to them, all these harmful, scary words to them. They're gonna die if they look up, upside down. They're gonna look, die if they go, if they don't have everybody's favor. They don't get there. They don't look like certain people. They don't have a certain amount of gang. They don't have a certain amount of followers. All this kind of, but faith is the eye that sees the invisible. How you know it's gonna work, Pastor Rush? I don't know it's gonna work. I know God's gonna work it. And I'm going to show you in a minute how I know, by the way, so we don't get in here thinking I don't know how it's going to work. Because faith is the eye that sees the invisible. It's the ear. Let's just look at what it is now. Faith is the eye, and it's the ear. It hears the inaudible. Sometimes you can't hear it. You know why? You're not using your faith. You're so tuned into your news station. You're so tuned into your, 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 your comments. You're so tuned into what everybody else is saying. You can't hear it anymore. And you talk too much, by the way, since I'm on that. Hush and listen sometimes. Sometimes God said, why don't you just hush? I'm trying to show you where Satan is, but you want to fight back. Faith is the ear that hears the inaudible. It's the hand that feels the intangible. When nobody knows it's possible, Satan, says, Satan will say, don't touch it. God said, put your hand there. I need your hand there. And it's the power that works the impossible. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about tonight or this morning. I'm still talking about... That next string of believers is going to have to have the word of God. You're going to have to. If you're going to come on, if you're going to get on board now, you've got to have the word of God. You're going to have to have the power of, of, of the name of Jesus, and you're going to have to have your faith. That's what the next strain of believers is going to have to have. Faith works by the spoken word. we got to speak faith. I'm staying on this one for a minute. Because speaking and, and speaking word of God, they all go together. Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Remember that? Say to this mountain. Say to the mountain. Be cast into the sea. You can't keep walking around thinking about it, y'all. We got to say it now. People heard you say something was going bad. People heard you say you were falling apart. People heard you say, I don't want to get old. People heard you say this is hurting. People, we keep hearing us say it, say it, say it. So they expect that. But now you got to start saying what you can't see. It may sound like a lie. Faith always looks like a lie to the unbeliever, but it always looks like faith to the believer. I'm not talking about just speaking some of your wild dreams that you want. I'm going to have five cars. I'm going to have six cars. You're going to have to have faith that God's going to provide. And it's not always based on your selfish desires. Okay. Here's, here's something I want you to write down. Faith does not ask, what shall I do? Okay. It doesn't ask, what shall I do? Before it has the time to ask, faith is up and doing it. It's just up and doing it. Sometimes you might be accused of moving ahead of time. And that's how faith, it, it'll just work like that. God will have you doing something. And before you know it, somebody can say, well, we didn't have a chance to vote on this. You know why? Because sometimes people don't have the faith to do what well, looks impossible. God says, I need you to start working. It, and then I'll send the people that's going to make it happen to you. Powerful word right here. Faith is a way of life. It's a walk with God. If you are not exercising your faith, I don't care who you are. You're saying, I'm not walking with God. I'm going to let Satan make the first step, and I'm going to follow Satan. Then I'm going to ask God to come help me. Faith is a walk with God. 
It's a walk with God. I pray right now that this is blessing you. I pray this is blessing you. I'm praying that you're glad that you came and jumped on this thing right now. I'm praying that you said, oh, God, thank you for letting me. I was, of all days, I was going to miss church. Glad I didn't miss this now because I understand that that last strain of unbelief, that last strain of COVID, it was rough. And they said another one's coming. But God, you're telling us this morning we can get ahead of this thing that you're looking for a strain of believers. Before David, whatever defeat, Goliath, he had to do something. He had to do something. I'm talking about this next level of faith. It's a way of life. Now, the word alone is a source of faith. But the word, I'm going to say this, will not build your faith unless it becomes a part of your very being. Faith people talk faith all the time. And faith people don't always have a whole lot of people to talk to. I'll say that again. Don't have a whole lot of people to talk to. Because sometimes people can talk very spiritual and spiritual. spiritual and you look around, they keep claiming something that's this. And I, I got this and I got a broken that. And this is not happening. That's not going to. It's just not, it's not a lot of faith. And so sometimes the conversations just get just kind of lost. God has blessed you. God has prospered you. God has healed you. God is keeping you. And you still find so much to complain about. So let me go on to what the next strain of believers got to have. And then I got one more and you can go and you can come back 10 o'clock because if I were you, I'd hear this message three times and give three different offerings. That's what I would do. Anyway, this next level of, 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 of strain of believers must pray. So this next strain, because see, now we, we've, we've kind of stopped praying. And one of the first things God is speaking to us now is, look, there's another strain coming. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of ease into prayer. We're going we're gonna to ease into it. We're going to start on the 31st at 12 noon. And, 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 and please don't call me. I'm just, I'm just uninviting your call right now. Don't call me with a complaint about prayer in every hour. Pastor, what am I supposed to do? You, you have your phone. If you have nothing, if you don't have a toothbrush, if you don't have a car, if you don't even have on clothes, you got your phone. So every hour on the hour, 2 o'clock, boom, I got to go Facebook Live. If you don't have Facebook, if you don't have internet, go sit in McDonald's. What are you doing? I'm coming in here because I'm about to pray with my church. I'm going to turn on and, and I'm about to have prayer. Somebody's going to be praying. Pastor's going to get in touch with some people and they're going to be praying for one minute. Why so little? Why so none? Why so none? God, I'll take a little. I'll take 30 seconds. If it means coming together to talk to you, I'll take 30 seconds. Praying for 45 minutes does not bring the power of God down if you don't have faith to operate the first 15 seconds. But this next strain of believers, God, to pray. If you watch, I'm about to go off on some other stuff, but, but, but I, just, I just love God for our school and our, the young people of this ministry. Don't, don't, don't come around acting like something wrong with you. They'll pray you up in a minute. Oh, I don't think my back. Can I pray for you? Oh, no, baby, I don't need to. Well, can I pray for you? See, this next train of believers, they'll pray. They'll pray and Satan, I'm going to tell you, Satan will throw an asthma attack on them. They'll pray, Satan will try to throw a seizure on them. They'll pray, Satan will try to throw them. In. I've watched it happen. Every time they open their mouths and pray, Satan throws something at them. But this next train says, I was so full of word that, okay, okay, I'm sick, I'm hurt, but I'm still praying. That next level, how many times do you pray for somebody? Throughout history, every outstanding man and woman of God has been a person of prayer. Everybody has been. Prayer is one of the Christian's most powerful weapons. See, let me tell you what happens. In prayer, the believer receives an infilling of divine energy. Once you start praying, you become, I'm just going to make this up now. I'm making this up to may help the children understand. When you pray, you become Superman. I'll just, that's what I mean by divine energy. You get, when you pray, you were, you were not feeling well when you walked in, but as you started moving, you started feeling better. You know why? Because you prayed. When you get up in the morning and it's not going so well with me, I'll just start praying in the spirit because I, I don't know what's hurting and what. I don't know why now. Can't call it kidney. Can't call it liver. Can't call it cancer. Can't call it cold. You don't know what to call. So I just call it out. 
You just start speaking in tongues, and then you'll be up. And you better have some friends that don't mind waking up if you need to call somebody, pray with you. And the prayer closet is actually the council meeting where, where commands are issued. When you, when you start praying, it's like you go into this, it's like this, like, like you're watching me right here. When you pray, it's like you go into this command center, and you say, broom, 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 broom. All these, all, these, all these issues are dropped off. When you go in prayer, it's like God's closing a closet with you. And you just talking to him. And in order to possess great power, you got to constantly return to the master and receive instructions. So sometimes people say, we're running out of ideas. No, you're not running out of ideas. You're running out of prayer. When you talk to God, he'll, he'll, he'll send instructions through somebody to you. I want you to get this message to my boy. I want you to get this message to my girl right now. Boom. Why? Because you prayed and God touched somebody else. They think it's their great idea. God said, I need you to pray. And when God says pray and you start talking to him, certain things will open up. Now, I'm going to say something right now that might puzzle some of you, but it's going to strengthen us. And please don't turn that television off, that red phone off, that, that iPad down. You got to stay and get this now. This is the last Sunday of this year. It cannot be the last Sunday of your life. And I'm speaking that in Jesus' name right now. Pastor, you don't know. I know God knows. And yes, I do know. We got to stop being so coward and backing down because the enemy said something. Well, if they didn't say something, you can't. God said, be slow to speak. Shh. Slow to anger. Cool out. Pray. You got to constantly return to the master and receive instructions. Now watch this. This is going to bless you. Now, now, when God said to me, prayer is not where the mind learns. It's where the heart gets instructions. See, we're so deep. Oh, Lord. Right now, I'm somebody right now on, on the internet, you're trying to find 35 first words of prayer. You're trying to find some inspirational, some quote to send to somebody about prayer who may not even be a believer. But this is not where the mind learns. You're not going to come out of prayer. But no, prayer is where the heart gets instructions. This is where God starts to just boop drop things into you. You know why? You know why you're so anointed? You know why you're so blessed? You know why you're so strong? Because you've been praying. In prayer, we learn about God. We learn about his blessings. We learn about his anointings. We learn all these things about God. We learn that in an hour of devotion and prayer, that a lot of, lot of libraries of wisdom are open. You're not going to find this anywhere else. Prayer is the key that unlocks the treasures of God. I can't get anything answered. I can't get a prayer through. I can't, I can't get some answers to some things I need. It's because, it's, because, it's because you won't pray. Prayer is the key. It, it'll just unlock it. It'll tell you you're acting too mean. You're losing all your friends now. You're operating under your zodiac sign. You're not acting under your anointing. Go back. Stop. You're treating the, the wrong person mean. You're about to lose it and blow it, and you're going to end up on skid row. You better go in there so God can get your heart right. Elijah demonstrated the prayer. When he called up on the rain to come down on the land where he was, there was a drought. The Bible points out that Elijah was a man just like we are. The difference is Elijah knew how to pray. It was a drought, and Elijah prayed, and it started raining. Pow! Prayed the word of God. Didn't have the name of Jesus then, but he had the word of God, and he had faith. And what did he do? He prayed, and what happened? It rained. The early church prayed. Where they all assembled together, and then when they all assembled together, the place was shaken. Why? Because they prayed. What's going to happen if we pray on December 31st, starting at 12 noon, and we pray all the way up to January 1st? At pray I promise you something's going to be shaken. If you don't know how to pray, you don't know the power of God. What I just said is that prayer is the most talked about, discussed, and least used power available to man. I don't know how many prayer journals, prayer booklets, we all discuss it. People say that in just passing. I'm having a hard day. Okay, babe, pray for me. I'll be praying for you. But, but, but we don't use it. Oil is a very good resource, but if it's untapped, it's no good. Coal that's, that's untapped is no good. It's a very good resource. And prayer that's untapped is what I call no good. 
Now, through personal communication with God, this is what prayer is. You can do things that you could never do before. You could do things you could never do before. I'm not going to tell you how many times me or other believers have stood and not wanted to. Don't, please don't tell me how long this message was. Tell me how long you've been asking for it. Tell God, Lord, I've been asking for this for a long time. It took the last Sunday of the year for you to talk to me like this. Even if you're impatient, tune out, come back in at 10. I'll do it all day if I need to. That's when people used to put so much pre pre pressure on counselors and people and pastors and leaders. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And all of a sudden you say, there's nobody there to help me. God said, because you're talking to everybody else that you thought needed help. I'm talking to you now. God spoke to me powerful on some things late last night. And I'll, you'll find out about it later on this week. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. So, so, so this is our continuous communion with God. Prayer, prayer, talking. I don't know about you, but it bothers me if my child doesn't talk to me. It bothers me. And I'm going to use another word. It upsets me if my grandson doesn't talk to me. I'm, what's going on? So just think now, and I'm just me, but just imagine God, all that he's given you and blessed you and, and allowed you to have access to him, and you won't, and then we want to complain because everybody's mean to me, everybody's doing this to me, because you're not talking to the one who really loves you. The last thing that this next strain of believers got to have, the next, this next strain of believers, you got to show some action. You have to show some action. Superman not flying is just a dude in the neighborhood with a towel on. Spider-Man, without jumping from building to building, just a dude going around with some tights on, on was falling off buildings. Okay, superheroes, you got to show some action. Now, when God gives us dominion, everybody in this mind, in this world right now, right quick, if you're listening, just say dominion, 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 dominion. That's power. That's dominion. See, this next strain of believer has to have some action. You're going to have to show some action. We're going to have to have some dominion. God says walk in church. God says walk in church. God says walk down the mall. You walk down the mall. I'm not talking about trying to be bad and prove to anybody what you can do. God is opening up doors right now for this very ministry to be able to walk back into this house. And it seems so impossible. It seems like, God, that doesn't seem right. We're going to let somebody else do it. God said, then you speak to the mountain. Speak to it. Stop speaking to the mountain and then running in the bushes. Dominion means to do. It's an action, not an idea. God does not give power to the inactive. God does not give power to the inactive. If you are inactive, God does not give you power to be inactive. You can do that on Satan's terms. If you're weak, he'll give you strength. If you're down, he'll lift you up. That's power. That's what God does. It's an action. Throughout history, God used men and women of action. Moses, what did he tell Moses? Moses, stretch forth your rod. That's what, action. You may look kind of silly, but stretch forth your rod. Action. And the sea open up. Jesus told a man with the withered hand, do what? Stretch forth your hand. Pow. And the hand is better. All the man had to do was stretch out his hand. How hard is that, church? How hard is that? Jesus did the rest. How hard is it to say, I'm going to commit to being in service at 8 o'clock, and I'm going to stay in service at 10 o'clock, and I'm going to come back tonight at 6 p.m. God, I need this. God said, can you just do a little thing and just show up? That's action. Can you just pray on the 31st? Give me 12 minutes. That's all he wants. I said every hour. Sounds like 12 hours. 12 minutes to get out of this traffic. Every hour, one minute. That's action. That's action. What you doing? I'm going in here and pray for a minute. What you going to do? Who pray? We're praying at our church. Pastor Rush is going to be having prayer. Say, who's going to be praying? I don't know who he's got praying, but I'm, I got to be in on this. I'll be back in a minute. You sitting up in a movie. I don't care what good part of the movie is. Oh, it's 2, two o'clock. Where are you going? I got to go to the restroom. Why? Got to pray. That's action. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. God doesn't give power to the inactive. When he says get in here and pray, that's what he means. He's a God of action. The children of Israel had to march around Jericho before the walls collapsed. Naaman had to dip seven times in the Jordan before his leprosy was clean. I'm talking about God's action. 
What did he say in John? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do. Watch this. The works that I verb. He shall he also verb. Then he said, greater works than these shall he verb. God said, you're going to, you're able to do, I don't care what Satan's got going on. You got to put a verb on it. Okay, put a word on it. Action word. Do, 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 do. He that believe the works that I do. I'm watching God. I'm watching Jesus. What did he do? He spat on the ground. What did Naaman do? Dip seven times. What did Moses do? Raise his hand. What did the withered hand man do? You know, okay, what did your mama do? What did your daddy do? What did you do? Action, 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 action. Did you come to church? Yes. Did you turn it on? Yes. Did you stay awake? Yes. Action, action, action. You're coming on the 31st? Yes. I'm going to be here every hour. How long? At least a minute. I don't care. I just got to get started. Action, action, action. Then he says, he says, he says, and these greater works than these shall you do. Why? Because you're going unto my father. What are we going to 12 o'clock? We're not coming here to sing some songs and have a good time, watch some video. We're going to the father, man. We're going to the father every hour on the hour. And, and you want to do something great. You want to believe in the last strain? The last strain? No. I'm talking about a believer that's going to believe in the next strain. When the church opens this time. You walk on the property, healing's going to happen. Yeah, I said it, and I believe it. So I conclude this message this morning by saying this. When God started making us and giving us the ability to show actions, works alone are not enough for salvation. Now, I don't care how many times you serve and sing and do all this stuff you do, it's not enough. But some action is going to be necessary. It's important. Paul reminded the church, we are laborers together, y'all. We're laborers together. He said workers together with God. So God commands, and his commandments have always been, go, do, give, work, go, do, give, work. This next strain of believers, not this next strain of COVID, but this next strain of believers, because we were coming before COVID ever hit, let me tell you. And that's when Satan said, I got to shut them down. I got to, you used to go to church. I got to give you a reason to stop going. These people lied. They let you down. This man was not right. That woman was not right. Those people were not right. You fell for it. God said, go, do, give, and work. If everybody around you falls apart, God said, I'll give you strength to get back up. You are part of that next strain of believers. If you want to be a part of this next strain of believers, if you want to be in it, right now, real simple. All you have to do right now is say, Lord, I listened to the word and I heard it. I've been in this place a long time. Say it. I've been in here a long time. But today, God, I make the transfer. In the name of Jesus, I want to be the next strain. Of believers. I want to hear your word. I want to use your name. I want to pray. I want to show action, God. I want to walk with you. I want to go, do, work. I take you as my Savior. And Lord, I thank you for allowing me to come back. In Jesus' name. Amen. and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.